what we've seen is x and y motion can each be thought of independently. Falling objects satisfy the equations of motion in one dimension for uniform constant acceleration. Whether the ball is originally horizontally mo moving or not, it's got no up or down component of velocity. So both objects start off with zero y component of velocity, and therefore their vertical motion is identical. They both fall with the same acceleration at any given moment in time. They're at the same height. How about in the x direction? The one that was just dropped had no x motion to start with, so it never gets any. The one that was projected sideways began with some x component, and that just continues. So it marches across uniformly to the left. It's going faster and faster downward, and so it follows a parabolic arc. Think about a similar example. You're in an airplane cruising along, and you've got some payload, and you drop it. You're moving this away, and you drop the payload. How is the payload going to move? If you aren't thinking too carefully, this is a common intuition. The airplane continues along, acceleration is down. Doesn't the object fall straight down? Doesn't the object land directly below where the airplane was when it dropped it? Nope, it does not. Because the equation of motion said v final x equals v initial x. x motion has nothing to do with the y motion. If you're in an airplane, you're moving to the right at 100 50 miles an hour, and you release something, at the moment of release, it was in the airplane. The object was moving along with the airplane at 150 miles an hour. And once you let it go, there is nothing going on in the x direction. There's no acceleration in the x direction. Of course, remember, I'm talking about no friction. And so as the airplane moves along, the object that drops, oops, airplane should be moving level, the object which drops is in free fall. It will get farther and farther below, going faster and faster downwards. But its horizontal motion will be the same as the airplane's, and it will always be under the airplane. If I fire a gun and I drop a bullet at the same time, which is going to hit the ground first, the object which I dropped or the bullet that I fired at some huge speed? If I fire horizontally, what we've just seen is, it's kind of counterintuitive, but that's what the equations of constant acceleration tell us. The bullet fired horizontally and the bullet dropped. They both hit the ground at the same time. Let's look at one kind of numerical example of this. It's a, a numerical example that's very similar to the examples we've been talking about. Here's Thelma and Louise heading towards the cliff. And at the moment they reach the cliff edge, they're moving at 50 meters per second. They're moving dead horizontal. I guess that's a bad adjective to use in this case. And uh, what's going to happen? Well, you know, any object, sorry if I'm chopping you off here, any object which starts off horizontally is going to follow this parabolic path. And there's all sorts of questions, quantitative questions, which you might want to answer a little bit maybe sick in this particular context, but you know, how long is it going to take? How much life have they got left? Where are they going to land? How fast is the car going to be going? That's an important one. Are they going to survive the crash? So we can figure all of this out. We've got the equations of motion. When you first start working problems in two dimensions, it can be a little intimidating, because we've got three equations in the x direction and three equations in the y direction. That's six equations, and you think, how am I going to figure out which equation to use? But you know, it's usually just a question of take a look at what question you're being asked, what you're given, and it'll be clear. For example, how long before they hit the ground? Okay, That's a perfectly legitimate question. So think for a second. What information am I given, and what am I asked for? I want time. So I've got to look for an equation that involves time. And when they hit the ground, those are words for what? It means that y is equal to 0. Oh, in order to solve this problem, I need one more piece of information. It depends on how high the cliff is. If it's a one-foot cliff, no sweat. If it's a 500-meter cliff, then clearly the time it takes for them to fall down is going to be a lot longer. If I've told you the height of the cliff, and I asked you for the time when they hit, 
I would hunt immediately for the equation that says y final equals y initial, because I know y final and I know y initial, plus v initial y t. What's v initial y? It's not 50. That's v initial x. v initial y is 0. This arrow has no up component and no down component. So that term just disappears. In fact, I've got uh, only one term, 1 half a t squared, and I know what a is. There's only one unknown in that equation I can solve for time. And once I know time, if I wanted to know how far they go, what would I do? I would go look at the x equations, because I'm asking an x question. If I was really being careful, which I really should be, I would pick a coordinate system. You should always pick a coordinate system when you start one of these problems. If I'm calling y up, and this was 0, and this was 500, y initial would be plus 500, y final would be 0, and a would be in the y direction, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Of course, it's 0 in the x direction. So when I'm looking for the range in the x direction, I would just use x final, that's this, equals x initial, plus v initial in the x direction, that's 50 meters per second times time. I already got the time, and I'm all set. Any question I can ask, those equations are all you need.